let's continue with um, the main practices Maranathas Guru Yoga. Maranatha, who was and is the guru of Ishanat, Jesus. So like yesterday, we will first align our bodies, put our body in order a few minutes, then generate compassion or bodhicitta. Bodhicitta actually means heart-mind of awakening heart mind of being aware awake and aware and then we will continue with maranathas guru yoga so again take a relaxed but upright sitting posture and at any point if you feel physical discomfort pain, numbness, aches. You can adjust your posture or change your posture. It is pointless to try to tolerate physical discomfort. Feel the body and let it completely relax. Just allow, give permission for all the tensions to just release, like letting um, pigeons out of a cage. From the whole body, letting pigeons out of a cage, letting tensions, subconscious holding, completely relax. So you allow that to happen while being perfectly awake and aware that this relaxation happens. You don't need to think while relaxing or plan while relaxing. You don't need to wish for relaxation to happen. Just let it happen. Physically, very visceral, physical feel of it. With your physical body, through your physical body. Very concretic practice, like all our practices. None of the practices are, you know, somehow etheric or only mental always with the body through the body using the body this is the way of mantrics mantra yogis tantra yogis which is also actually directly connected with the ultimate attainment of full enlightenment or light body, rainbow body or body of resurrection. It is based on body positive view instead of body negative view. There are so many religions and traditions and ways of practice that have, have the view that body and genitals and sexuality and you know um, sense senses and sense pleasures are a problem an impediment to enlightenment 
but actually there is no full enlightenment of light body or resurrection without the physical body. This view is shared by all tantrics of Hinduism, all tantrics of, of Buddhism, tantrics of Taoism, and also practitioners of uh, contemplative Christianity. Historically, there has been many, many after Jesus in the Christian tradition who have attained light body. Small light body, that was discussed yesterday, or an even full light body. So body positive. And this is of course first exercise that we learn when we start practicing meditation, yoga, becoming aware and feeling the body. It is very common that when people start meditating that they can't feel their legs, for example, or can't feel anything from solar plexus down. What embodiment means that we can feel and do feel and that this recognition of God within or basic state or wakeful nature is a physically embodied and felt experience. So we all have to lay some foundation, necessary foundation. What I'm about to say next is really necessary and foundational because without it the whole path and all these practices don't really make sense. So we all have this wakeful and completely pure nature as potential. So, uh, hidden under our self-based ideation and self-based confusion that follows from that ideation, underneath or somehow in between those thoughts, usually negative, very limited, very restricted, thoughts, habits, uh, behavior patterns, is this completely pure nature. Completely pure, already completely perfect, completely perfect. And this is our divine nature, our sameness with God. sameness. So everybody has this divine nature. Everybody has it. No matter who you are, in what kind of life situation, no matter if you are opposed to it, it's still there. But again, there is difference to this basic nature of ours being potential, untapped, or tapped even a little bit, tapped to a significant degree, or tapped in full, and realized in full, embodied in full. But 
what is necessary for us to understand, to know and to remember. Especially when we have hardship in life and we doubt everything and we curse everything. You know, when we have rough patches. Remind yourself that this is just your self-based habit patterns, probably traumatic reactions at play. Self-based dark night periods. And those always pass. They never stay. For a practitioner, that is. Non-practitioners, people who don't practice, who don't meditate, who don't pray, who don't do anything, they get stuck with this stuff, with dark nights and their traumatic patterns for decades and decades, for lifetimes, isn't it? Just look at the people who you know. People brood on things. When I had that fight three years ago with my brother, with my sister, with my parent, with my relative, with my neighbor, I should have really said that, because that would have really put my mother into her place. People really brood on things. Brooding on things is a mark of self-delusion. Delusion. Being completely deluded and believing that one exists as separate entity, separate individual self who is separate from others. But as you know, all that typical functioning of deluded mind, samsaric mind, becomes less and less the more we know our true nature, basic nature. The more we know ourselves having been made in the image of God. All that negative thinking, ill will, Thoughts of insult and harming that feel like when you have those thoughts, it feels like your body is burning, feels hot, uncomfortably hot, makes you feel very small, very contracted, and it, um, what is that word? Uh, completely drains you of energy, vital energy, makes you exhausted so fast. The angrier you get, the faster you get exhausted. We all know how it is. But it keeps getting better the more we know ourselves. And that is actually an important point. I've mentioned God that I've spoken about today. And um, knowing God is the same as knowing our own basic nature. Again, please try to drop away all notions you might have about how God is. And just listen, just take into consideration what I'm saying and suggesting and transmitting what I'm pointing out. So once again, in my experience, God is not some rude and grudgeful being somewhere who judges and decides over the life of others. 
and give illnesses to innocent creatures and puts uh, people into awful situations, accidents and so on. There is no such God and no such God who has that kind of will of God. That is just karma at play. Which, by the way, karma is included uh, in ancient Judaism. Karma. Cause and effect. It's taught in uh, ancient Hinduism. Big teaching doctrine in Buddhism. Anyway, my point is that knowing ourselves is the same as knowing God. But of course, we relate to, uh, as especially probably because of my own uh, upbringing and personal history, being a Christian belonging to church, lessons, religion, religious lessons at school is why I personally feel that uh, relating to God is different than relating to Buddha. And I think that it, it it's pretty same or similar to others who come from Christian or post-Christian background. Anyway, the main point is that uh, start fresh. All I'm saying that our basic nature, wakeful and aware, full of goodness, kindness and love and compassion, is God in us. It's Buddha nature and God. These are just different terms coming from two different traditions. All right, so here we are. Practicing. Why? So that we get to fully know ourselves and embody this basic nature this basic divine nature. In technical terms, we practice to become fully enlightened, just like Jesus, just like Maranatha, just like Babaji, Guru Rinpoche, and all the many other masters of the history from different traditions. And we are not seeking to attain this full enlightenment only to enjoy this enlightened state ourselves. Of course, we want to end our own delusion, delusions and confusions and traumas and all that. We want that to end. We want to know ourselves completely, fully. We want to know our most basic nature, our own true nature. That's one bit, one part of it, of our motivation. But the other part is that we're also doing this, not for our own sake, but for the sake of all beings, all sentient beings. Sentient means that beings who feel, who have a sense of per, uh, perception, who have a sense of self, have a sense of existence, sentient beings, beings who feel, who think, 
who conceptualize. That makes those beings also suffer. So it is for all these beings, sentient beings, who also have Buddha nature, basic nature, true nature. God lives in all beings. Yet how many beings know their godly nature or sameness with God? So we seek to tap our potential in full, in other words, attain full enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings, so that we can show the way, we can help, and just be examples to others about what is possible. This is why Maranatha, like I briefly described in my short talk before this session, <clears throat> this is why Maranatha chose to take rebirth as fully enlightened being uh, since his birth, just to be an example, just to be an example to others, and to make make the fundamental point that delusion and suffering, samsaric existence is optional. That we didn't need to suffer with the help of spiritual, yogic, dharmic teachings, we can put an end to our delusion and suffering, our samsaric existence, and become masters of our own being, become godlike, Pure. Completely pure. For the sake of all sentient beings, we practice here together, we practice yoga, meditation, and turn to wonderful great master, great avatara, Maranatha. Dear Maranatha, dear Guru of Jesus, Guru of Ishanat, come to us, hold our hands, sit with us, Bring among us the enjoyment, the love, the tasty, rich flavor of God, of divine nature. And please help us to see and experience that each one of us has the same nature. Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. Om Amrita Maranatha Ye Namaha. Om Amrita Maranatha Ye Namaha. simple, sincere invitation 
request of blessing. And immediately, because of that sincerity, the Master will immediately come to us, arrive to us. Then we only need to feel to receive the blessings and nothing else. Feel in your body, in your energy, in your whole being. Beloved Maranatha, please help us to heal of our traumas. Please help us to heal of our traumas, psychic injuries, our fears, our anxieties. You are perfectly welcome to uh, request Maranatha to heal whatever illnesses or physical ailments you might have. Because healing of all and any ills is very much part of becoming fully enlightened. Because it concerns the body and meridians, atoms and cells.
very good. Stay with him. Let's lie down. <laughs> 